Janma di asaya tamba ya ritara tas chatir swabiga swara. Tene Brahma Rudaya Adikava Ye Mojan Tija Suraya Tejo Barimida Tejo Barimida Jata Vinimayo Jatra Trisargum Rusya Damna Swina Sada Nirasta Kuhakam Satyam Param Dimahi Damna Swina Sada Nirasta Kuhakam Satyam Param Dimahi Oh my Lord, Shri Krishna, son of us O my Lord, Shri Krishna, son of Vasudeva. O all-pervading personality, God. O all-pervading personality, God. Offer my respectful obeisances unto you. Offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Shri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon Lord Shri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. And the primeval cause of all causes. And the primeval cause of all causes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. Of creation, sustenance, destructions of manifested universes. <clears throat> he is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is in independent because there is no other cause beyond him. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. It is the only who first imparted the very knowledge unto the, the heart. Original the original living being. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. Of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes. Only because of him do the material universe. Temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature. Temporarily manifested by the reaction of the three modes of appear nature. Appear factual, although they are unreal. Appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Shri Krishna. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Shri Krishna. Who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode. Who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode. Which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. Which is forever free from the illusory representation of the material world. I meditate world. upon him, for he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma Projita Kaitra Vocha. Dharma Pujita Kaita Vutra Paramo Nirmatsana Nam Satam Paramo Nirmatsana Nam Satam Vedyam Vastavam Atra Vastu Vedyam Vastavam Astra Vastu Sivadam Tapa Trayom Mulanam Sivadam Tapa Trayom Mulanam Srimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite Srimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite Kim Vapurir Ishwaraha Kim Vapurir Ishwaraha Sadyo Hidi Avarudhyate Tra Sadhya Rudhya Vadhyad Titra Prithvid Kriti Bihi Susu Subhis Takshana Kriti Bihi Susu Subhis Takshana Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in their hearts. The heart. highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. The highest truth, the reality distinguished from religion such, for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. Is sufficient in itself for God realization. Is sufficient itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? What is the need of other scriptures? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. By this culture of knowledge. By this culture of knowledge. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kalpaturu galitam falam. Nigama kalpaturu. Sukhamakad Amrita Dravya Samyutam. Sukhamakad Amrita Dravya Samyutam. Pibata Bhagavatam Rasamalayam. Pibata Bhagavatam Rasamalayam. Muhur Ahurasika Bhuvibhavaka. Muhur Ahurasika Bhuvibhavaka. O expert and thoughtful man, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. O expert and thoughtful man, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire tree of Vedic literatures. The mature fruit of the desire tree of the Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadeva Goswami. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadeva Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all. Including liberated souls. Including liberated souls. Shrivatam Swakata Krishna. Shrivatam Swakata Krishna. Punya Shravana Kirtana. Punya Shravana Kirtana. Hridiyantakshti. 
And for one who hears about Krishna, Lord Krishna, who is dwelling within everyone's heart, Lord Krishna, who is dwelling within everyone's heart, acts as a best wishing friend, acts as a best wishing friend, and purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him, and purifies the devotee who is constantly engaged in hearing of him. Nasta prayeshu bhadreshu, nasta prayeshu bhadreshu, nityam bhagavata sevaya, nityam bhagavata sevaya, bhagavati uttama sloke, bhagavati uttama sloke, bhaktir bhaviti naistake. In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam. As he hears more about Krishna from Bhagavatam. And from the devotees. And from the devotees. He becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. He becomes fixed in devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhava. Tadarajas tamo bhava. Kama loba dayasche. Kama loba dayasche. Chaitai tera navidam. Chaitai tera navidam. Sitam sattve prasidati. Sitam sattve prasidati. By development of devotional service. By development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. One becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus, material lusts and avarice are diminished. And thus, material lust and avarice are diminished. Evam prasanna manaso. Evam prasanna manaso. Bhagavat bhakti yoga taha. Bhagavat bhakti yoga taha. Bhagavat tattva vijnanam. Bhagavat tattva vijnanam. Mukta sangasya jayate. Mukta sangasya jayate. When these impurities are wiped away, when these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his uh, position of pure goodness. A candidate remains steady in position of pure goodness. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. And understands the science of God perfectly. And understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate Rudaya Grantis. Chidyante Sarva Samsaya. Chidyante Sarva Samsaya. Chidyante Chasya Karmani. Chidyante Chasya Karmani. Mukta Sangha Sajayate. Mukta Sangha Sajayate. Thus Bhakti Yoga severs the hard knot of material affection. Thus Bhakti Yoga severs the hard knot of material affection. And enables one to come at once to the stage of a Samsayam Samagram. And enables us to come at one to the stage of assumptions of our Understanding of the supreme absolute truth personality of Godhead. Understanding the supreme absolute truth personality of Godhead. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 16, verse number 25, 26, yeah. Mm. Is it 26? 26 to 30. Mean four verses. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. Uh, it's uh, 26 to 30. All right. Satyam socham daya shantis. Satyam socham daya shantis. Jaga santosha arjavam. Jaga santosha arjavam. Samodamastapak samyam. Samodamastapak samyam. Tatik. Kisho parati shutam. Titik cho parati shutam. Gyanam viraktir aishwaryam. Gyanam viraktir aishwaryam. Suryam tejo balam smriti. Suryam tejo balam smriti. Sotantri yam kushalam kantir. Sotantri yam kushalam kantir. Daryam mardavam evacha. Daryam mardavam evacha. Pragal bhyam prasraya silam. Pragal bhyam prasraya silam. Saha ojo balam bhaga. Saha ojo balam bhaga. Gambir yam star yam astikyam. Gambir yam star yam astikyam. Kirtir mano nahankriti. Kirtir mano mahan kriti. Ete chanye cha bhagavan. Ete chanye cha bhagavan. Nitya yatra mahaguna. Nitya yatra mahaguna. Pratya mahatvam ichadbir. Pratya mahatvam ichadbir. 
Naviyanti smakarichit. Naviyanti smakarichit. Tinaham guna patrena. Tinaham guna prapatrena. Shri Nivasena Sampratam Shri Nivasena Sampratam Suchami Rahitam Lokam Suchami Rahitam Lokam Papmana Kalineksitam Papmana Kalineksitam Purport by His Divine Grace Translation Oh, sorry. Uh, translation uh, in him reside truthfulness, cleanliness, intolerance of another's unhappiness, the power to control anger, self-satisfaction, straightforwardness, steadiness of mind, control of the sense organs, responsibility, equality, tolerance, equanimity, faithfulness, knowledge, absence of sense, enjoyment, leadership, chivalry, influence, the power to make everything possible, the discharge of proper duty, complete independence, dexterity, fullness of all beauty, serenity, kind-heartedness, ingenuity, gentility, magnanimity, determination, perfection in all knowledge, proper execution, possession of all objects of enjoyment, joyfulness, immovability, fidelity, fame, worship, pridelessness, being as the personality of Godhead, eternity, and many other transcendental qualities which are eternally present and never to be separated from him, that personality of Godhead, the reservoir of all goodness and beauty, Lord Sri Krishna, has now closed <coughs> his transcendental pastimes on the face of the earth. In his absence, the age of Kali has spread its influence everywhere. So I am sorry to see this condition of existence. Purport by his divine grace, A.C. Bhakti Vinanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada. Even if it were possible to count the atoms after smashing the earth into powder, still it would not be possible to estimate the unfathomable transcendental qualities of the Lord. It is said that Lord Anantadeva has tried to expound the transcendental qualities of the Supreme Lord with his numberless tongues, and that for numberless years together it has been impossible to estimate the qualities of the Lord. The above statement of the qualities of the Lord is just to estimate his qualities as far as a human being is able to see him. But even if it is so, the above qualities can be divided into many subheadings. According to Srila Jiva Goswami, the third quality, intolerance of another's unhappiness, can be subdivided for the devotees. In the Bhagavad Gita, the Lord states that he wants every soul to surrender unto him only, and he assures everyone that if he does, he will give protection from the reactions of all sins. Unsurrendered souls are not devotees of the Lord, thus there's no part particular protection for everyone in general. For the devotees, he has all good wishes, and for those who are actually engaged in loving transcendental service of the Lord, he gives particular attention. He gives a direction to such pure devotees to help them discharge their responsibilities on the path back to God. By equality, number 10, the Lord is equally kind to everyone as the sun is equal in distributing its rays over everyone. Yet, there are many who are unable to take advantage of the sun's rays. Similarly, the Lord says that surrendering unto him is the guarantee for all protection from him. But unfortunate persons are unable to accept this proposition and therefore they suffer from all material miseries. So, even though the Lord is equally well-wishing to everyone, the unfortunate living being, due to bad association only, is unable to accept his instructions in toto, meaning completely. And for this, the Lord is never to be blamed. He is called the well-wisher for the devotees only. He appears to be partial to his devotees, but factually the matter rests on the living being to accept or reject equal treatment by the Lord. The Lord never deviates from his word of honor when he gives assurance for protection and promise 
the promise is executed in all circumstances, it is the duty of the pure devotee to be fixed in the discharge of the duty entrusted to him by the Lord or the Lord's bona fide representative, the spiritual master. The rest is carried on by the Lord without a break. The responsibility of the Lord is also unique. The Lord has no, responsi uh, no responsibility because all his work is done by his different appointed energies. But still he accepts voluntary responsibilities in displaying different roles in his transcendental pastimes. As a boy, he was playing the part of a cowboy. As the son of Nanda Maharaja, he discharged responsibility perfectly. Similarly, when he was playing the part of a Chatriya, as the son of Maharaj Vas uh, Vasudeva, he displayed all the skill of a martially spirited Chatriya. In almost all cases, the Chatriya king has to secure a wife by fighting or kidnapping. This sort of behavior for a Chatriya is praiseworthy in the sense that a Chatriya must show his power of chivalry and to his would-be wife so that the daughter of a Chatriya can see the valor of her would-be husband. Even the person I got at Sri Rama displayed such a spirit of chivalry during his marriage. He broke the strongest bow called Haradhanur and achieved the hand of Sita Devi, the mother of all opulence. The Chatriya spirit is displayed during marriage festivals, and there is nothing wrong in such fighting. Lord Sri Krishna discharged such responsibility fully because although he has more than 16,000 wives, in each and every case he fought like a chivalrous Chatriya and thus secured a wife. To fight 16,000 times, to secure 16,000 wives, is certainly possible only for the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Similarly, he displayed full responsibility in every action of his transcendental gestures. The 14th quality, knowledge, can be further extended into five subheadings, namely intelligence, gratefulness, power of understanding, the circumstantial environments of place, object, and time, perfect knowledge of everything, and knowledge of the self. Only fools are ungrateful to their benefactors. The Lord, however, does not require benefit from anyone besides himself because he is full in himself. Still, he feels benefited by the unalloyed services of his devotees. The Lord feels grateful to his devotees for such unsophisticated, unconditional service and tries to reciprocate it by rendering service. Although the devotee also has no such desire in his heart, the transcendental service of the Lord is itself a transcendental benefit for the devotee, and therefore the devotee has nothing to expect from the Lord. On the assertion of the Vedic aphorism, Sarvam Klavidam Brahma, we can understand that the Lord, by the omnipresent rays of his effulgence, called Brahma Jyoti, is all pervading inside and outside of everything, like the omnipresent material sky, and thus he is also omniscient. As far as the beauty of the Lord is concerned, he has some special features that distinguish him from all other living beings, and over and above that, he has some special, attractive, beautiful features by which he attracts the mind of even Radha Rani, the supermost beautiful creation of the Lord. He is known, therefore, as Madan Mohana, or one who attracts the mind of even Cupid. Srila Jiva Goswami Prabhu, Prabhu has scrutinizingly analyzed other transcendental qualities of the Lord. And affirms that Lord Sri Krishna is the absolute supreme personality of Godhead, Param Brahma, Brahman. He is omnipotent by his inconceivable energies, and therefore he is the Yogeshwara, or the supreme master of all mystic powers. Yet the Yogeshwara, uh, being the Yogeshwara, his eternal form is spiritual, a combination of eternity, bliss, and knowledge. The non devotee class cannot understand the dynamic nature of his knowledge because they are satisfied to reach up to his eternal form of knowledge. 
all great souls aspire to be equal to be in, in knowledge with him. This means that all other knowledge is ever insufficient, flexible, and measurable, whereas the knowledge of the Lord is ever fixed and unfathomable. Srila Sutta Goswami affirms in the Bhagavatam that although he was observed by the denizens of Dwarka every day, they were ever increasingly anxious to see him again and again. The living being can appreciate the qualities of the Lord as the ultimate goal, but they cannot attain the status quo of such equality. This material world is a product of the Mahat Tattva, which is a state of the Lord's dreaming condition in his Yoga Nidra, mystic slumber in the causal ocean. And yet the whole creation appears to be factual presentation of his creation. This means that the Lord's dreaming conditions are also factual manifestations. He can therefore bring everything under his transcendental control and thus whenever and wherever he does appear, he does so in his fullness. The Lord being all that is described above maintains the affairs of the creation and by his so doing, he gives salvation even to his enemies who are killed by him. His he is attractive even to the topmost liberated soul and thus he is worshipable even by Brahma and Shiva, the greatest of all demigods. Even in his incarnation of Purusha Avatara, he is the lord of the creative energy. The creative en material energy is working under his direction as confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita 9.10. He is the control switch of the material energy and to control the material energy in innumerable universes. He is the root cause of innumerable incarnations and all in all the universes. There are more than 500,000 incarnations of Manu in only one universe, besides other incarnations in different universes. In the spiritual world, however, beyond the Mahatattva, there is no question of incarnations but there are plenary expansions of the Lord in different Vaikuntas. The planets in the spiritual sky are at least three times the number of those within the innumerable universes in the Mahatattva. And all the Narayana forms of the Lord are but expansions of his Vasudeva feature, and thus he is Vasudeva, Narayana, and Krishna simultaneously. He is Sri Krishna Govinda Hare Murari, He Nath Narayana Vasudeva. All in one, his qualities, therefore, cannot be counted by anyone, however great one may be. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Okay, so this is an amazing purport. And I want to focus on one main point here. That is, it says, being the Yogeshwara, his eternal form is spiritual, a combination of eternity, bliss, and knowledge. The non devotee class cannot understand the dynamic nat nature of his knowledge because they are satisfied to reach up to his eternal form of knowledge. All great souls aspire to be equal in knowledge with him. This means that all other knowledge is ever, is ever insufficient, flexible, and measurable, whereas knowledge of the Lord is ever fixed and unfathomable. Srila Sutta Goswami affirms in the Bhagavatam that although he was he was he, meaning Krishna, was observed by the citizens of Dwarka every day. They were ever increasingly anxious to see him again and again. Okay, so this there's a com there's a comparison here between the non devotee class cannot understand the dynamic nature of his knowledge because they are satisfied to reach up to his eternal form of knowledge. So his eternal form of knowledge, uh, if I'm not mistaken, he's referring to the Brahman effulgence, uh, which is eternal, or sat. So the Mayavadis are satisfied with sat. 
uh, understanding eternality. And the uh, yogis are satisfied with sat chit, eternity and knowledge. But the devotees, they want sat chit ananda, vigraha. This, and, and therefore, uh, and, and, and therefore he gives the example of the devotees in Dwarka. They were ever increasingly anxious to see him again and again. The living beings can appreciate the qualities of the Lord as the ultimate goal, but they cannot attain the status quo of such equality. <clears throat> so, what does that mean? They cannot attain the status quo of such equality. Well, they can't come, they can't equal Krishna, basically. And uh, because of that, uh, however, the citizens of Dwarka, let's look at that. He said, the citizens of Dwarka, every day they were ever increasingly anxious to see him again and again. So that means Satchit Ananda. That's the thing that the Mayavadis and the yogis, uh, only some yogis can attain that, attain that state of that uh, ananda. But mostly the yogis who are interested in developing uh, yogic uh, uh, cities and things like that, they don't get to the stage of ananda. They, they might have eternity and knowledge but Ananda means ever increasing bliss. So we see that the, the residents of Dwarka, they were not, they were, they were increasingly anxious to see him again and again. The living beings, okay, then, then Prabhupada says, the living beings can appreciate the qualities of the Lord as the ultimate goal, but they cannot attain the status quo of such equality. Well, uh, this whole idea of equality, uh, let's, let's take a look at the Bhagavad Gita because it talks about it. In Bhagavad Gita 6.29, let's take a look at that. It says, a true yogi observes me in all beings and also sees every being in me. Indeed, the self-realized person sees me, the same Supreme Lord, everywhere. So, in the purport, Prabhupada writes, a Krishna conscious yogi is the perfect seer because he sees Krishna, the Supreme, situated in everyone's heart as super soul, Paramatma. Ishwara Sarvabhutana, Hirde Se Rujana Tistati. The Lord, in his Paramatma feature, is situated within both the heart of the dog and that of a Brahmana. The perfect yogi knows that the Lord is eternally transcendental and is not materially affected by his presence in either a dog or a brahmana. That is the supreme neutrality of the Lord. The individuals, so now he's talking about neutrality there. Now he's going to come to equality. Um, the individual soul also is also situated in the individual heart but he is not present in all hearts. That is a distinction between the individual soul and the super soul. One who is not factually in the practice of yoga cannot see so clearly. A Krishna conscious person can see Krishna in the heart of both the believer and the non-believer. In the Smriti, this is confirmed as follows. Atatatvacca martritvacca the Lord being the source of all beings is like the mother and the maintainer as the mother is neutral to all different kinds of children the supreme father or mother is also consequently the super soul is always in every living being so it's not prejudice he's in the heart of every living entity is trying to give direction to every living entity However, some living entities accept that direction and some don't. So then it says, outwardly also, every living being is situated in the energy of the Lord. 
as will be explained. So everyone's situated uh, in the energy of the Lord, meaning, uh, first of all, there's the Brahman effulgence that is everywhere present. And then there's the universal form that includes everything in the material world. And uh, so no one can live outside of the Lord. Everyone is within the Lord's energy. <clears throat> As will be explained in the seventh chapter, the Lord has primarily two energies, the spiritual or superior and the material or inferior. The living entity, although part of the superior energy, is conditioned by the inferior energy. The living entity is always in the Lord's energy. Every living entity is situated in him in one way or another. The yogi sees equally because he sees that all living entities, although in different situations according to the results of fruit of work, in all circumstances remain the servants of God. While in the material energy, the living entity serves the material senses, and while in the spiritual energy, he serves the Supreme Lord directly. In either case, the living entity is the servant of God. This vision of equality is perfect in a person in Krishna consciousness. So, uh, and another aspect of this, and it's very subtle, but uh, as devotees, we should try and understand it. It's related to how we perceive time. So in, the, in this 10th morning walk in Life Comes From Life, Prabhupada discusses this. First of all, uh, Bhakti Sri Damodar Maharaj, also known as Dr. Singh, he says a certain thing. He says, Medical science says that all the bodily cells are replaced every seven years. And Srila Prabhupada says, no, not every seven years. Every second, every second the blood corpuscles are changing. Is it not so? Dr. Singh, yes, Srila Prabhupada. And as soon as the blood corpuscles change, you change your body, Dr. Singh. In scientific terminology, can the eternality of the soul be compared to conservation energy? So he changed the subject there right away. <laughs> so Prabhupada is saying, we don't, you don't change your body every seven years. You're changing your body every second. And, every, and, and when you go to sleep and you wake up, you have a, virtually a different body. You see. So this is a revolutionary concept. Now, now let's see where that's leading to. So Dr. Singh changes the subject. He says, or Bhakti Sri Damodar Maharaj changes the subject. He said, in scientific terminology, can the eternality of the soul be compared to conservation of energy? Srila Prabhupada, there's no question of the conservation of energy because energy is always existing. In other words, it's eternal. And then Bhakti Sri Damodar, but according to scientific terminology, the law of conservation of energy is that the energy cannot be created or destroyed, which means, I think, that it is eternal. Srila Prabhupada. Oh, yes, that we admit. Krishna is eternal, therefore all his energies are eternal. Bhakti Srinathamadar Maharaj. Is that why the living entity is also eternal? Srila Prabhupada. Yes, because we are an energy of the Lord, right? Uh, he has this aparyamitastvanyam pakriti vidimeparam. We're part of his superior energy or uh, parabrahman. Uh, or, or, and there's the inferior energy, apara prakriti, and there's a the superior energy, apara uh, para prakriti. So we're part of Krishna's superior energy, uh, which is eternal. But however, the material energy is also eternal, but it goes through two stages of being, uh, uh, being um, uh, you can see it, and then sometimes it disappears. But in both cases, it's existing. Okay, so, uh, yes, if the sun is eternal, its energies, heat and light are also eternal. Bhakti Dhamra, does it follow from this then that life cannot be created or destroyed? 
Srila Prabhupada. Yes, life is eternal. It is not created or destroyed. It is only temporarily covered. I am eternal, but last night I was covered by sleep. So I think in terms of yesterday and today. This is the condition of the material world. In other words, time is also eternal. And therefore, in the spiritual world, there's what you call the eternal present. You, don't, you only perceive time by its non, uh, uh, non, uh, by its non-presence. In other words, in the spiritual world, you don't see past, present, and future. You see the eternal present. You feel time by its absence. In the material world, we see past, present, and future because we are in ignorance. But actually, there's only the eternal present. So when you go to sleep and then you wake up, you, 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 you experience what you think is past, present, and then there's going to be the future. But actually, it's not true. There's the eternal present. Now, this is, now, why is it that we're perceiving like that? Because our soul is eternal, therefore it's, it's eternally, it's the eternal present. But our body, which is different than our soul, experiences this sleep and then waking up, and therefore it, it, it feels as if there's a past, there's a present, and a future. Now, this is extremely important. In, in philosophy, this has been discussed for many, many years. If you look, try and look it up on the internet, you'll find that philosophers, right from Plato and then Aristotle, have been discussing what is time. And uh, Aristotle, uh, and even Einstein was discussing what is time, and many other people have discussed what is time throughout history. And they all have different opinions. Einstein was saying that uh, time uh, and the passage of time is an illusion. <laughs> and other people say, no, it's real. There is such a thing as past, present, and future. So here Prabhupada has given a definitive answer to this question. And that is, the soul is eternal. And it's, exp and it's experiencing the eternal present. However, the soul that becomes attached to the body experiences past, present, and future. And thus is an illusion about its existence. You see, so when we say you don't die when your body dies, well, most people don't understand that. They say, what are you talking about? You know, because they, they think the body and the soul is the same. And, be, and that is actually ignorance. There's a difference between the body and the soul. That's the first thing we have to learn in Krishna consciousness. That's the first thing Krishna explains to Arjuna in the Bhagavad Gita. It's the first step of spiritual life to understand that difference. The, the dira is not bewildered by the changing of the body, either in this life or at the moment of death, because he knows that the soul is eternal. And jayate priyate bhakadachya nayam bhutva bhavita bhavita So that verse, uh, second chapter, Verse 20, it says that the soul is never born and never dies. It never comes into existence and never uh, st stops to exist. It is eternal. So we don't really understand what that means. Uh, but here, Prabhupada explains it in, in a very, very amazing way and in simple language. But if you read everything that's on, that the, science, uh, that the philosophers and scientists write about time, you'll get confused. And they all have different opinions. Here is the definitive truth. And that is, life cannot be created or destroyed. Or oh, like Dr. Singh says that. Srila Prabhupada, yes, life is eternal. It is not created or destroyed. It is only temporarily covered. I am eternal, but last night I was covered by sleep. So I think in terms of yesterday and today. This is the condition of the material world. In other words, it's due to the conditioning of the material world that we're experiencing past, present, and future. 
but it's actually not true about our soul. Okay, so I just wanted to bring that up. So now, here we see uh, when, when it says, the non-devoted class cannot understand the dynamic nature of Krishna's knowledge because they are satisfied to reach up to his eternal form of knowledge. All great souls aspire to be equal in knowledge with him. This means that all other knowledge is ever insufficient, flexible, and measurable, whereas the knowledge of the Lord is ever fixed and unfathomable. So those are very profound uh, statements right there. And we'll stop on that point and continue to discuss it tomorrow. Are there any questions?